In Judaism, a minyan Hebrew, minyan min jan lit. Noun count, number, place. Minyanium minyanum is the quorum of ten Jewish adults required for certain religious obligations. In more traditional streams of Judaism, only men may constitute a minyan. In more modern streams, women are also counted. The most common activity requiring a minyan is public prayer. Accordingly, the term minyan in contemporary Judaism has taken on the secondary meaning of referring to a prayer service. Topic: <laughs> Sources. The source for the requirement of minyan is recorded in the Talmud. The word minyan itself comes from the Hebrew root mine mnh meaning to count or to number. The word is related to the Aramaic word mean, numbered, appearing in the writing on the wall in Daniel chapter 5 verse 25. Babylonian Talmud The Babylonian Talmud Megala 23b derives the requirement of a minyan of ten Shomer Shabbat for Kiddush Hashem and Devarim Shi Bikdusha matters of sanctity, by combining three scriptural verses using the rule of Gezerah Shava. The word, midst, in the verse, and I shall be sanctified in the midst of the children of Israel. Leviticus chapter 22 verse 32 also appears in the verse, separate yourselves from the midst of the congregation. Numbers chapter 16 verse 21 the term, congregation, is also used in another verse that describes the ten spies who brought back a negative report of the land of Israel. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? Numbers chapter 14 verse 27 From this combination, the Talmud concludes that sanctification should occur in the midst of a congregation of ten. Jerusalem Talmud the Jerusalem Talmud Megala 4 -4 offers two sources for the requirement, also using a Gezerah Shava. The word, congregation, in the verse, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2 is also used in another verse. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? Numbers chapter 14 verse 27 Since the term, congregation, in the later verse refers to the ten spies, so too in the former verse, you shall be holy, refers to a congregation of ten. The second source is based on the term, children of Israel, which appears in the following two verses. And I shall be sanctified in the midst of the children of Israel. Leviticus chapter 22 verse 32. Quote, and the children of Israel came to buy among those that came. Genesis chapter 42 verse 5 Just as the children of Israel in the later verse refers to the ten sons of Jacob who descended to Egypt to obtain food during the famine, so too the former verse refers to sanctification among the children of Israel in the presence of ten. Topic. Rituals requiring a minyan Some rituals require a minyan, the presence of a rabbi a teacher, not a priest, is not essential. It is said that, nine rabbis do not constitute a minyan, but ten cobblers can. The following instances which require a minyan are listed in the Mishnah in Megillah IV, 3. Public worship, which consists of the additional readings of Kaddish, Berchu, Kedusha and the repetition of the Amidah. The treatise Sopharim, written in Babylonia in the 7th century, contains a passage 10 to 7, often interpreted as asserting that in land of Israel at that time seven men were allowed to hold public services. Correctly interpreted it refers to the repeating of Kaddish and Berchu at the synagogue for the benefit of late comers, and declares that in Israel such a repetition is permitted only when seven according to others, when six men are present who have not yet heard these responsive readings. The priestly blessing. Reading from the Torah and prophets with the associated benedictions. Seven benedictions recited at a wedding, or at any meal of the bridegroom and bride within a week from the wedding. Using the formulation, Let us bless our God, from whose wealth we have eaten. In preparing for grace after meals. Ancient funeral ceremonies, no longer in use, which incorporated arranging the standing and sitting, reciting the benedictions of the mourners and the consolation of the mourners. Other instances which require the presence of a minyan include 
Kiddush Hashem Recitation of the Thirteen Attributes of Mercy Recitation of Burkat Ha Gomel. While the required quorum for most activities requiring a quorum is usually ten, it is not always so. For example, the Passover sacrifice or Korban Pesach from the days of the Temple in Jerusalem must be offered before a quorum of thirty. It must be performed in front of Kahal Adat Yisrael, the assembly of the Congregation of Israel. Ten are needed for the assembly, ten for the congregation, and ten for Israel. According to some Talmudic authorities, women counted in the minyan for offering the Korban Pesach, e.g., Rav, Rav Kahana, Pesachim 79b. Topic: <laughs> Prayer with the minyan. It was the firm belief of the sages that wherever ten Israelites are assembled, either for worship or for the study of the law, the divine presence dwells among them. In rabbinical literature, those who meet for study or prayer in smaller groups, even one who meditates or prays alone, are to be praised. However, the stress is put upon the merits and sacredness of the minyan of ten. The codifiers, such as Maimonides, his annotators, and the author of the Shulchan Arik, have unitedly given strength to this sentiment, and have thus, for more than a thousand years, made the daily attendance at public worship, morning and evening, to be conducted with a quorum of ten. There is a disagreement between the medieval commentators on whether prayer with a minyan is preferable or obligatory. Rashi is of the view that an individual is obligated to pray with a minyan, while Namanides holds that only if ten adult males are present are they obliged to recite their prayer together, but an individual is not required to seek out a minyan. Rashi and the Tosafo on Talmud Bavli Pesachim 46a are both of the opinion that one is required to travel the distance of four mil to pray with a minyan. The Mishnah Buryura writes that one who is sitting at home must travel up to one mil. Eligibility There is much discussion in rabbinic literature on the matter of who is eligible to be counted in a minyan. Some discussions revolve around whether or not a minyan should consist of individuals who are obligated in performance of that particular precept. Some authorities deduce who may constitute a minyan by drawing on the verses which are brought as the basis for minyan and their implication. For example, the verse, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? is referring to the Ten Spies, a congregation comprising Jewish adult males. It is understood from this that a minyan must likewise comprise ten Jewish adult males. Other classical sources base their rulings on discussions brought in the Talmud. Contemporary rabbinical authorities deal with a plethora of questions relating to qualification for minyan. Topic: <inaudible> Minors. Before a boy turns 13, he is considered a minor in Jewish law and is not obligated in the performance of religious precepts. However, if a child is over 6 years of age and has adequate comprehension of the significance of the precepts, his status may change. His inclusion in Minyan is thus subject of Talmudic dispute. Based on the Talmudic passage in Barakat, Rabinu Tam states that a minor can act as the tenth person and according to the Baal HaMa'or, up to four minors would be permitted. Rosh explains that those who permit the inclusion of a minor maintain that it is the Divine Presence which actually constitutes the tenth member, thereby validating the Minyan. This may explain why some of these authorities require that the minor represent this fact by holding a chumash, however the majority of poskim follow the conclusion of the ri who holds that a minor can never be counted in a minyan under any circumstances. This is the stance taken by the Shulchan Aruch, who, although acknowledging some authorities do permit the inclusion of an astute six-year-old, writes that consensus rejects this view and only males over the age of thirteen may constitute a minyan. However, in extraordinary circumstances some are lenient and permit a minor over six years old holding a chumash or sefer Torah to complete a minyan. <inaudible> women Although the issue of whether women are permitted to make up a minyan has been noted in early works, the matter has only come to the fore in the past few decades. A reaction to an enhanced role of women in modern society and to the demand for their inclusion in all areas of religious life, the Talmud itself does not directly address the question of whether women may count as part of a minyan for Devarim Shebakdusha. Since the Talmud uses the same Gezerah Shava for Kiddush Hashem as it uses for Devarim Shebakdusha, one may expect the laws for those two cases to be the same. 
Many authorities are of the opinion that women are included in the minyan for Kiddush Hashem and Hillel Hashem. However, traditional codifiers generally do not include women in the minyan for Devarim Shebekdusha. The Talmud relates that women are required to recite zimun of three participants, and Barakat 45 says that women may recite the zimun. However, the majority of scholars are of the opinion that ten women may not recite the additional form of zimun bishem, which is obligatory when ten men are present. The few authorities who do permit ten women to use the zimun bishem formulation explain that the necessity for ten in this case is unique and cannot be compared to other instances requiring minyan. Only Rabinu Simha among these authorities mentions the possibility of one woman joining with nine men to form a minyan for prayer. This isolated opinion is rejected by the codifiers. There are a number of cases, including reading of the Megala, where a limited number of authorities count women towards the minyan. However, in these cases the reason why women are counted is not because they constitute a congregation, but rather because a public audience is required. A possible reason why it is men who were obligated to form a congregation in order to convene the Divine Presence is that women were individually considered sufficiently holy and did not require the combination of a group and special prayers to achieve added holiness deficient in men. Due to the righteousness of the women in the wilderness, they did not suffer the same deadly fate as their male counterparts, and despite the spies' negative report about the Holy Land, wished to enter it. Others point to the sociological reality that women were traditionally expected to care for the house and children. The Jewish tradition did not require women to leave their social role to engage in public prayer. In 1845, rabbis attending the Frankfurt Synod of the Emerging Reform Judaism declared that women count in a minyan, a formalization of a customary reform practice dating back to 1811. In 1973, the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards of Conservative Judaism voted to count men and women equally as members of a minyan. In 2002, the committee adapted a responsum by Rabbi David Fine which provides an official religious law foundation for women counting in a minyan and explains the current conservative approach to the role of women in prayer. This responsum holds that, although Jewish women do not traditionally have the same obligations as men, conservative women have, as a collective whole, voluntarily undertaken them. Because of this collective undertaking, the fine responsum holds that conservative women are eligible to serve as agents and decision makers for others. The responsum also holds that traditionally minded communities and individual women can opt out without being regarded by the conservative movement as sinning. By adopting this responsum, the CJLS found itself in a position to provide a considered Jewish law justification for its egalitarian practices, without having to rely on potentially unconvincing arguments, undermine the religious importance of community and clergy, ask individual women intrusive questions, repudiate the halakhic tradition, or label women following traditional practices as sinners. Topic. Transgressors. The question of whether a sinner can be counted for a minyan has become much more pertinent in recent generations, where a general malaise in religious observance among the majority of Jews has occurred. The Shulchan Aruch states that though a person may be a notorious and habitual sinner and has even committed a capital offense, unless a person has been placed under a religious ban due to his sinful behavior, he is counted among the ten. The source provided for this sentiment is from the incident with Achan who, despite having been put to death for his transgression, was still referred to as a Jew. However, the PRI Megadim explains that this is only true if he sins for self-satisfaction, but if a person sins to spite God or has openly severed their connection with the Jewish people by professing a hostile creed or by publicly desecrating the Shabbat, such a person is prohibited from constituting a minyan. Nevertheless, many contemporary authorities have been driven to adopt a lenient view in the face of widespread public non-observance of the Shabbat, on the presumption that it does not indicate a deliberate denial of faith, but is rather a result of ignorance and succumbing to the pressure of social and economic conditions. Proselytes <laughs> 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 Even though Tosafo deduce from the Talmud in Sukkah 38b that wherever the verse states children of Israel it comes to exclude a proselyte unless there is specific clause for inclusion, here with regard to Minyan the sources state that there is no reasoning to exclude a full-fledged proselyte. Since such a person is permitted to act as a prayer leader, obviously they can count towards a Minyan. Topic. Those who are unable to respond 
As long as a person is of sufficient intelligence, he can be included in the minyan, even if he is unable to respond to the prayers which make the presence of ten a necessity. According to some sources, this is because as long as ten are gathered the Divine Presence descends and it is feasible to pronounce a Devar Shebekadusha. This includes someone who is in the middle of his prayers but is precluded from responding to the Hazan's incantations and someone who is mute but can hear the prayers, someone who is deaf but has the ability and knows when to respond can also be included, there is however a dispute regarding someone who is asleep or intoxicated. Such a person has sufficient intelligence, but at present can neither hear or respond. Ideally he should be woken to the extent that he is dozing, but in extraneous circumstances where it is impossible to arouse him, it is permitted to include the maximum of one sleeping person in the minyan. In the case of a drunkard, the accepted view is that even if he has not reached the drunkenness of Lot, he still cannot be included. A minimum of six of those gathered in the minyan have a duty to listen attentively and respond appropriately to the additional prayers and that at least nine are required to respond for the repetition of the Amida. Arrangement It is not just the status of the individual which dictates eligibility, the physical arrangement of the minyan is also a factor. Maimonides delineates the confines which are placed on the arrangement of the people making up a minyan. Ideally all the members of the minyan should be gathered in one room. However, if they are within hearing distance of one another, it is permitted for the ten to be distributed in two adjoining rooms. Later authorities limit the extent of this opinion and rule that even if there is an opening between the two rooms, the two groups are still considered separate entities. Only in unusual circumstances is it permitted, as long as some of the men in each room can see each other. Topic. Ten and ten minyan Ten men and ten women Over the last decade or so, more and more lay-led worship communities have formed that attempt to combine commitment to traditional Jewish law with a push for increased participation and recognition of the role of women. While many are simply referred to as independent minyanim, the term used by the Jewish Orthodox Feminist Alliance for those groups that consider themselves part of the modern Orthodox community is partnership minyan. Many of these groups have adopted the custom initially instituted by Shira Hadasha in Jerusalem to wait for a ten and ten minyan, made up of ten men and ten women. Shira Hadasha has based many of its decisions on the writings of rabbis like Mendel Shapiro and Daniel Sperber. Some also use the Guide for the Halakhic Minyan, a compendium of halakhic sources supporting increased participation by women in services, as a basis for discussions of practices like the ten and ten minyan. Topic. See also Torah reading Burkat Hamazon Zadikam Nisturam Topic. Further reading Adler, Rachel. Innovation and Authority, a Feminist Reading of the Women's Minyan. Responsum. In Gender Issues in Jewish Law 2001-3-32 Broid, Michael J. Wolowelski, Joel B. Further on Women as Prayer Leaders and Their Role in Communal Prayer, An Exchange, Judaism, 42-4-1993-387-395. Feinstein, Moses. Splitting the Worshippers into Two Minyanim for the Sake of Two Mourners, Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Yora Deah Vol. 4, ch. 61-4. Feinstein, Moses. Including One Who Dwells in the Land of Israel for a Minyan on Second Day Yom Tov, Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Vol. 4, ch. 106, pg. 196-199. Feinstein, Moses. Including a person who is praying a different prayer, Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Volume 4, ch. 20, pg. 31. Feinstein, Moses. Including a minor in extraneous circumstances, Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Volume 2, ch. 18, pg. 188-189. Feinstein, Moses. 
forming a minyan of minors for the purpose of religious instruction. Heb. Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Volume 2 Chains. 98, pg. 290. Feinstein, Moses. Is it sufficient for the minyan to contain a majority of those who have not already prayed? Heb. Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Volume 1, ch. 28-30, pg. 72-76. Feinstein, Moses. Including one who profanes the Sabbath, Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Vol. 1, ch. 23, pg. 66-67 and Orich Chaim Vol. 1, ch. 19, pg. 189. Feinstein, Moses. Is praying with a minyan obligatory or just preferential? Heb, Igro Moshe, Noble Press Book Corp. Brooklyn, New York, 1982, Orich Chaim Vol. 1, ch. 31, pg. 77, Orich Chaim Vol. 2, ch. 27, pg. 200-202, Orich Chaim Vol. 3, ch. 7, pg. 305 and Orich Chaim Vol. 4, ch. 2, pg. 27. Hauptmann, Judith. Some thoughts on the nature of halakhic adjudication, women and minyan, in Judaism 42, 4, 396 413 Oppenheimer, Stephen. The Breakaway Minyan, in Journal of Halacha and Contemporary Society 46, 2003, 41, 59 Safra, Chana. The Minyan, Gender and Democracy, Heb, in Men and Women, Gender, Judaism and Democracy. Ed. Rachel Elior. Jerusalem, Van Leer Jerusalem Institute, Urim Publications, 2004 Schachter, ZVI, Essay on Women's Minyan Bet Yitzhak, 17, 1985. Sternbeck, Moishi. Is it better to include someone who profanes the Sabbath or dissolve the Minyan? Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 469. Sternbeck, Moishi. Counting the Omer with a Minyan Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 310. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including a person whose hearing is assisted with a hearing aid Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 101. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including someone who lives with a non-Jewish lady. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 113. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including someone who has not yet finished the silent prayer. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 104. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including worshippers who are praying outside the synagogue. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 163. Sternbeck, Moishi. Sanctifying the New Moon with a Minyan. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 1, ch. 205. Sternbeck, Moishi. Reciting Burkat Ha Gomel in the presence of ten people. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 2, ch. 143. Sternbeck, Moishi. Going on holiday to place where there is no minyan. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 2, ch. 63. Sternbeck, Moishi. Leaving an exact minyan during prayer. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 2, ch. 62. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including an Israeli for the reading of the law on second day Yom Tov of the Diaspora. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 2, ch. 89. Sternbeck, Moishi. Including a despondent person with the worry that he may not respond. Heb, Teshuvos Vihanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 2, ch. 61. 
Sternbeck, Moishi. Annulment of vows on New Year's Eve with a minyan. Heb, Teshuvos v. Hanhagos, Frank Publishing, Jerusalem, 1997, Volume 3, ch. 161. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. In an unenclosed area, how close together must people be to be considered part of the minyan? Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 2, ch. 44. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Can one person make up two separate minyanim simultaneously? Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 2, ch. 45. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Including a person who desecrates the Sabbath. Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 3, ch. 26 4, Volume 6, ch. 9. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Including a person who married out. Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 3, ch. 65. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Can people in a corridor be included in a minyan? Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 4, ch. 9. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Regarding a small congregation who need to hire out people to make up the minyan. Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 9, ch. 1, pg. 17-18. Weiss, Yitzchak Yaakov. Can women make up their own minyan? Heb, Minchat Yitzchak, Minchat Yitzchak Publishing, Jerusalem, 1991, Volume 9, ch. 11a, pg. 17. Wolowelski, Joel B. Women's Participation in Shiva Barakat. Modern Judaism. 12 2, 157. Doi 10.1093 MJ 12.2.157 Zuckerman P 1997 Gender Regulation as a Source of Religious Schism Sociology of Religion 58 4 353 to 373 Doi 10.2307 3711921 JSTOR 3711921. Frimmer, Arye. Women and Mignon. Tradition 23 4, 1988 54 77. Footnotes External links Mignon, Jewish Encyclopedia article. The Minyan Project by Meccan Hadar Godaven.com Find an Orthodox Minyan anywhere in the world. What is a Minyan? On Ask Moses. What's the truth about? Davening with a Minyan? PDF, 92.9 KB Minyan in the Jewish Knowledge Base on Chabad.org Frimmer, A., Women and Minyan. Tradition 23-4, pp. 54 to 77 1988 Modern Orthodox View of Women in Minyan for Various Purposes